Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, help us fight against our culture's need to see that just wealthy people are blessed. And rather, help us see that all people are blessed. Amen. How many of you have heard of the pastor Nadia Boltz Weber? Oh, yeah. She is quite the controversial figure in the Lutheran Church, if you don't know who she is. She has definitely pushed the boundaries of what pastor's public behavior should be. <laughs> I would look her up. I won't explain some of the things she's done, but uh, it's definitely different than what we're used to. She has forced us Lutherans, I mean, to examine who it is that we want to be moving forward. I find myself agreeing and disagreeing with her on a variety of topics. So even in my own heart, she's very controversial. <laughs> but she came out with her own set of Beatitudes, a more modern set that I felt were a great way to experience what Jesus was trying to do at this, in this gospel story. See, Jesus, when he proclaimed these blessings to the people, he would have made them a little uncomfortable. Blessing the poor would have been radical. And saying woe to those who have a lot 
Well, that just wouldn't have made sense to them. Didn't God bless that person? That's why they have a lot of stuff, right? That's what people thought. That's what their stories from old told them. In our Bible study, we're learning about Abram. He's blessed and he's been given a lot of land and a lot of stuff. He's becoming his own little mini nation. But Jesus says, you got it backwards. Jesus is basically saying that those who have much on earth don't understand the true meaning of God's kingdom. Whoa. <laughs> so here is Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber's Beatitudes. It's quite long, so bear with me. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt. Those who aren't sure. Those who can still be surprised. Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are they for whom death is not in an abstraction. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones from whom tears could fill oceans. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are they who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who no one else notices. The kids who sit alone at middle school lunch tables. The laundry guys at the hospital. The sex workers. And the night shift street sweepers. Blessed are the forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive, the underrepresented. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, the ones for whom life is hard. For Jesus chose to surround himself with people like them. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are the ones without lobbyists. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of of people. Blessed are the burned out social workers, the overworked teachers, and the pro bono case takers. Blessed are the kind hearted NFL players and the fundraising trophy wives. And blessed are the kids who step between bullies and the weak. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful, for they totally get it. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Those were Pastor Nadia's Beatitudes. The point of those modern Beatitudes is to show us that we have not really changed since the time of Christ. We still look to the mountaintops for God. We still look to success for God. But Jesus time and time again tries to get us to see that Christ is in the trenches. We too often worship the theology of glory, the theology that says that God is found in the magnificent, in the mountaintops, in the regal. But in reality, God is found down below on a cross. Hence the theology of the cross that our main founder, Martin Luther, made popular. It reminds us that God died, and not in a spectacular fashion either. Even in our modern reenactments of the crucifixion, we make it seem so grand and regal as if the, the cross was this some um, non-thing uh, that happened a lot of the time. It was, it was a common occurrence. 
crucifixions. But we make it seem like it only happened to Jesus. The reality is, is that Jesus was just another prisoner being crucified with two other criminals, and there were probably others being crucified that day as well. The sad thing is, is that we turn the cross into glory. And we oftentimes don't sit in the, and acknowledge the messiness, the horrific, the embarrassing, the demeaning, the unhonorable death that was crucifixion. We jump immediately to the ascension. But we need to sit with the cross. We don't want to imagine our God as a criminal, as a friend of sex workers, as poor, as a friend of strangers and immigrants. We want God to feel superior so that when we align ourselves with God, we feel like we're lifted up. But I think we're wholeheartedly missing the point. See, we used to think that a wicked life would lead us to death, to imprisonment. We like to think that all people punished by the government deserve to be there. Or that we deserve good fortune because of our own efforts, but others don't because they're lazy or not as smart or what other other lie we want to tell ourselves. Jesus' life is a complete contradiction to that reality. Jesus was blameless and yet imprisoned. Jesus was fighting for the poor and yet was driven out of town. Jesus was fighting for equal rights for all people, whether they were prostitutes, those nasty Samaritans, anybody. The leaders didn't want that, though. And the vast majority of the people didn't want that. And this, to me, is because we don't like sermons that make us feel bad about ourselves. (laughs) It's hard to listen to those sermons, as you're experiencing right now. (laughs) But I think sometimes sermons that make us feel sad or angry or upset or hurt, they're the ones that I think change us, if we're willing to listen. Because the truth of Jesus Christ is not one of comfort or privilege. It never has been. Because many times that those whom the world blesses, Jesus condemns. And those whom Jesus blesses, the world condemns. And sometimes we need to be honest with ourselves and recognize where it is where we are standing in opposition with Christ. Because coming to church every Sunday doesn't automatically make us in alignment with Christ's mission. The word in the Eucharist surely direct us. They, they, they bring us back home so that we have a, another chance to go out into the world and do the work. But it's no guarantee that we'll continue that progress throughout the week or the months or the year or years. Jesus helps us see that if we want to see where God is working in the world, we have to look where the world is condemning, oppressing, judging, and controlling. Because it is in these groups of people, those that the world sees as less than, that Jesus would have sided with and would have died with. So, I want to leave you with a spiritual challenge. I want you to think of a group of people that you hate the most. We all have them. Me too. We all have those prejudices within us. So I'd like you to take some time. Think about who you would not invite into your home. Got an idea? And I want you to first ask God to soften your heart. 
And then I want you to work towards seeing them as blessed. Person you hate, person you find disgusting, revolting, a group of people who you can't stand. I want you to see them as blessed. And then if you're feeling extra filled with the Spirit, you can take that extra step to seek out that person or group in a safe manner and talk to them. Ask them about their story in a non-judging way. Just hear them. And hear how their story is blessed. You don't have to invite them into your home. We are called to invite them into our hearts. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you.